This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 745, In Defense of the Good Enough Mother, by Hilary Barnett of WholeMotherhood.co. Hello, everybody. I am Greg Audino, and welcome back to ORD. This is where I narrate relationship articles to you each weekday, just like an audiobook. And we are back now with the final post of the week, so we are going to end it on a good note with a great post for all of the moms out there. Let's dive right into it and start optimizing your life. In Defense of the Good Enough Mother by Hilary Barnett of WholeMotherhood.co Quote, Every life is a piece of art, put together with all means available. By Pierre Genet Before I begin this post, please know that I am not a child psychologist, and I have no training in child development. I am simply a mother who wants to do the best job of parenting my children that I can. With that in mind, I've been thinking a great deal lately about attachment theory and the concept of the good enough mother. The idea, put forth by psychoanalyst David Winnicott in the 1950s, argues that there is no perfect parent. I believe that so many of us have been hoodwinked into believing that if we fall short of perfect, our children will be developmentally traumatized. But the science simply does not support this. So much of this underlying and often unspoken belief is a major contributor to mom guilt. Maybe if we can relearn what separates perfect from good enough, we can free ourselves and our children from this unnecessary burden. In the book, The Body Keeps the Score, Brain, Mind, and Body in the Healing of Trauma, Bessel van der Kolk, MD, discusses the serious effects of developmental trauma on children. The research and data is clear. Abuse, neglect, and insecure-slash-anxious attachments have the power to completely alter a child's personality and life trajectory. Trauma is stored not only in the brain, but in the body it has a negative impact on a child for the remainder of their life. But, after presenting the importance of a healthy and secure attachment for infants, he goes on to say this, Quote, Conscientious parents often become alarmed when they discover attachment research, worrying that their occasional impatience or their ordinary lapses in attunement may permanently damage their kids. In real life, there are bound to be misunderstandings, inept responses, and failures of communication. Because mothers and fathers miss cues or are simply preoccupied with other matters, infants are frequently left to their own devices to discover how they can calm themselves down. Within limits, this is not a problem. Kids need to learn to handle frustrations and disappointments. With good enough caregivers, children learn that broken connections can be repaired. The critical issue is whether they can incorporate a feeling of being viscerally safe with their parents or other caregivers. End quote. I can definitely relate. I learned about attachment theory while seeing my own therapist and instantly began questioning every action I had ever taken with my daughter. What about the time I was stuck in traffic and couldn't get home to feed her in time? What about our sleep training attempts, with nights spent standing at the door with a timer while she screamed, in a desperate and excruciating attempt to help her get to sleep on her own. The guilt was overwhelming. I couldn't go back and change my choices in those moments. Most of the moments were either situations out of my control or attempts to control outcomes in my very early stages of parenting. Boy, have I learned a thing or two about control since then. Was my incompetence traumatizing my child? Every single time I met with another mother, she expressed the same exact fear. She simply wasn't sure if she couldn't trust her own decisions. She read every book, every article, and every parenting forum. She had advice coming from all directions, her pediatrician, her parents, her friends, long-lost aunts and cousins, moms and Facebook threads. But she still wasn't sure that anything she was doing was right. She worried constantly that she was somehow damaging her child psychologically. Her mistakes haunted her constantly reminding her that she simply wasn't cut out to be this baby's mother. Enter the good enough mother theory. It isn't simply about meeting your child's basic needs, but trusting yourself to do so. This mother learns best how to look after her baby, not from health professionals and self-help books, but from having been a baby herself. Wow, what a novel idea. Mothering from our own intuition, 
trusting ourselves, listening to our gut. The good enough mother also knows that to meet the child's every single need forever is simply not a healthy way to introduce them to the realities of life. Quote, To achieve this shift from the baby's total dependence to relative dependence, the good enough mother has, by a gradual process, to fail to adapt to her baby's needs in order that the baby can begin to learn to tolerate the frustrations of the world outside of himself and his mother. End quote. As I began to research further, I saw my own natural inclinations being spelled out in black and white. I wanted to provide the most secure attachment possible for my children, and I knew that 99% of the time, I did that. I also felt confident that I was emotionally attuned to my babies and continued to learn their cues and needs as they grew. But so much of mothering felt like a constant push and pull, following my daughter's lead, listening, paying attention to her cues, and at times, taking the lead myself to guide her toward the best possible scenario for us both. In the early days, this revolved a great deal around the two basic needs for both of us, sleep and food. But now that she's older, I see this ongoing tension and balance continuing to play out on a daily basis. My therapist also confirmed this to me when he said that no matter how amazing our parents are, we will always have issues. It's simply inevitable. There is no perfect family, no perfect parent, and no perfect child. We are human, we are broken, and we choose to love our children in the mess of it all. Trying to be perfect is a waste of time. It has been a long process and involved a great deal of healing on my own part. But now, I feel that I can say with confidence that, no, I have never traumatized my kids. Yes, I have made mistakes, big ones. I've lost my temper, my patience, and my sanity at times but my kids know they are loved. I am not only good enough, I am the best possible mother my girls could ever need. Respecting the gravity of childhood trauma means being clear about what it is and what it is not. Neglect and abuse are never okay, and making light of it does a disservice to anyone who has actually endured it. Sometimes parents find themselves in situations where they simply cannot be the best parent possible. They may be walking through grief or dealing with their own trauma that causes them to be less emotionally available. This is the reality of life. After my second daughter was born, I endured a deep, deep depression. I couldn't have changed this scenario. And although I am sad about what that season stole from my ability to experience joy with my daughter, I know that she always felt loved and protected in the midst of it. So, as we mothers heal, and as we love our children and ourselves, Can we make each other a promise that, from now on, we will be proud of being good enough? That we will ditch the perfectionism, guilt, and fear that is trying so hard to drag us down? That we will quiet the voice inside that tells us we are failing our kids and know that we are doing the very best we can with what we have right now? That we will trust our instincts? That we will continue to work on our own healing so that we can be the best possible mothers to our precious babies? Here's to being good enough. You just listened to the post titled In Defense of the Good Enough Mother by Hilary Barnett of WholeMotherhood.co Really quick, everyone. When it comes to weddings, we all know that suit and tuxedo rentals can be one of the biggest sources of frustration. Your guy says he'll see to it while you secretly keep your fingers crossed and hope that the groom and groomsmen get their outfits sorted out on time. If you're worried that your attention to detail makes you look like a bit of a bridezilla, Generation Tux is on your side. Their free home try-on program for grooms comes with free round-trip shipping and free swatches. How does it work? Everything arrives on the doorstep of all the party members a whole two weeks before the wedding. On-demand fit consultations allow you to take care of any fit issues long before the 11th hour. At Generation Tux, the more the merrier is how it goes. That means that five paid members get you a free suit or tuxedo rental, and you can even keep your suit or tux when seven members are checking out. When the party's over, just place everything back in the box and use your prepaid label to drop off at UPS. So don't leave it to chance. Save time, save money, and your sanity by checking out www.generationtux.com ORD Use promo code ORD for 10% off the entire groom's party attire and party on. All right, whole motherhood dropping the truth on us today. 
Uh, it was sort of touched upon yesterday as well. Do some strangely small memories from childhood often stay with us into adulthood? Yes. Therefore, are parents constantly shaping their children? Yes. I think what Hillary is saying here is that it's wonderful to stay aware of this as a mother. We want to put the effort forth to be there for our kids in each moment. And you can still do that while simultaneously acknowledging and accepting inevitable failure from time to time. Parenting is often put up on a pedestal because of the huge influence it has over others. But that can often be an exhausting waste of effort. Like everything, the perfect parent does not exist. The parent that tries to stay mindful and do right by their child and remembers that their own ability to treat themselves kindly also helps them raise their child is the only type of parent you should seek to be. So with that, let us wrap it up, team. Thank you so much uh, for joining me today for this Friday episode. Hope you go out there and have yourselves a great weekend. And I will see you back here on Monday, where your optimal life awaits.